let's go now to uh, Motrax model. Uh, Jeff Adam is the owner of the company uh, with Greg Cassidy. And this is an S scale model of uh, a firehouse. Greg, Jeff, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Jeff, do you want to say anything first before I start going through it? Um, I did shift out all the orders. So the last order went out yesterday. That was for the S scale. So everybody should have their orders. Hopefully by today or tomorrow. Jeff, I really do appreciate you, uh, you and Greg doing. Thank you so much for wanting to participate. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you decided to do it in this scale. Yeah, as, I mean, I already blew the market out when I released that kit last year. <laughs> but I think, you know, next year when we do it again, we're going to do a whole new a new a whole new building oh it's great maybe you come back on the show and build it for us hey with greg's help right. i can <laughs> that's great all right uh, everyone uh i will hope that i don't have any gremlins tonight um welcome to my workshop as they said we're going to be building the motrack models alton firehouse uh i will be building it in s scale the kit is available in N, H, O, S, and O. Uh, this is week one. Uh, what we will first do is review the tools and the supplies that we went over at the introduction last month. Um, I will uh, go over the build schedule for the next five weeks. I'll show you the prototype and the contents of the kit, and we'll go ahead and paint and assemble the tower for this. Um, I've talked to a couple of fire fighters and we're figuring that this uh, tower was for drying hoses but we don't have any actual information on that but that's our guess it was also used as a lookout tower well somebody mentioned that but there's only a window on one side so we figured that must be looking towards the fire chief's house <laughs> so uh these are the kits or i'm sorry these are the tools that uh I usually get out when I'm going to build a kit and I'll go over the ones that I especially found useful when building this one. Uh, a couple of clamps. I used both some large ones and some small ones. A uh, couple of blades, an X-Acto blade, and I also used a, scamp, a scalpel. It was very handy when doing the uh, diamond shingles and a set of tweezers. I also like to use one, two, three blocks. Uh, those are metal blocks that are one inch by two inch by three inches. Uh, I use them for both weights and for holding stuff together or holding it plumb when something's drying. And I also found a lot of use for a sanding stick or some sandpaper. Uh, you may use different tools, but these are what I use predominantly in building this kit. Uh, as far as the colors go, I used mostly the colors that were suggested in the instructions, and that's on the left there, the white, uh, a signal or caboose red, and a country gray. Now, I was painting my kit to look just like it does uh, on the box. You, of course, can paint yours differently, however you'd like, but these are close to the colors that the actual prototype building used. Also, there's some other uh, items here that we'll go through. Uh, I used a couple of different glues, a tacky glue, canopy glue, and a liquid PSA. I also used a couple of stains. And we're going to show two ways of putting mortar onto a brick chimney. And I used spackling and a distress crayon. So you'll see how those both work. Now, as far as the schedule for this build, this is week one, and we're going to go through the tools and supplies. We will go through the steps in the schedule. Uh, I'll show you the prototype and the kit contents, and we'll start painting and assembling the tower. For week two, we'll be assembling and painting the walls, and the walls are two parts, so you'll see what I mean. We'll also be painting and assembling the doors and painting the corner trim. And on week three, we'll be painting and assembling the windows, installing the windows and shades, and then assembling the building. Week four, we'll be shingling the roof and painting the base and installing the roof. And then on week five, we have the porch roof and the front doors and gingerbread trim to put on. 
the chimney base and we'll assemble some ladders and also the weathering. Now, this is the prototype, and this is up in Alton Bay. Uh, the building was built in 1894 for $500, and it's still standing there today. And as you can see, it looks very much like our kit does. They haven't really done very much in changing or renovations. The only difference that I can see now is they have a roll-up door and some storm windows on it, which I'm sure they appreciate these days. Uh, and this is Jeff's kit that he takes to shows. This one is in HO scale. Um, next time I see him, he'll also have an S scale version that he can show at shows. Uh, but this shows the colors that I used and how it's going to come out looking. I didn't do a lot of weathering on mine because a fire station is usually kept in pretty good shape. It's not like a general store or something. And so while I did a little bit of fading paint uh, in general, the building is in good shape, and I think that's appropriate for a fire station. Now, I would like you... to say, hold on, Craig. I would like mm -hmm. to say the N, S, and O scale, your chimney is square instead of rectangular shape like the HO scale. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, S, all I mean, I'm really familiar minor. with. Yeah, all I'm really familiar with is the S scale. I know Jeff has mentioned a couple minor differences, but there may be more that he can let people know about. So this is what comes in the kit. You get a nice set of color instructions, and all of the sub assemblies are sort of broken apart and packaged together. So you can start uh, at one part and not have to open everything just to get going. Um, what we have over here, are the main building walls, and these are your tower walls. Now, as you can see here, they consist of, of two layers, sort of a laminate si uh, situation. And the outer walls are clapboard, both for the main building and for the tower. And then the inner walls are to give it support. And this way you don't need bracing in the building. And Jeff, uh, did a very nice thing in making the grain go the opposite directions between the outer and the inner walls. So once you laminate them together, they're as strong as plywood. And uh, they really hold together well. Um, you have up here the laser cut windows. And from what I understand, the O and S scale have laser cut, and the HO scale has tissue windows, and I believe it's a mixture of both in the N scale. That is um, true. These laser cut windows went together very nicely and I was very uh, happy to work with them. Down here, you have the laser cut doors and uh, they get put together from a couple of pieces. Uh, you also have a couple extra parts here, the chimney cap and the front valance for the uh, porch. Up here, you have the roof for the tower and these this is the roof parts for the porch. And then what you have here is the roof trim and some of the gingerbread that goes on the front of the building. Now up here, you have the diamond cut shingles, which is one of the unusual things about this. I've only done diamond cut shingles once before. Uh, there are, I'm not gonna say they're trickier, but there's a technique you may need to make sure that you adhere to, but when they're done, they come out looking oh so nice. And then here is the base that uh, it sits on, and I ended up painting it to look like concrete. And here are your full color instructions, and they uh, give a good job at showing what you're supposed to be putting together. So let's go ahead and put the tower together first. Uh, it's a good way to get you started with this tab and slot construction and the laminate uh, way of putting the walls together. So you have the outer pieces here and inner pieces, obviously it's easy to tell which one goes with the window. Uh, the important thing to note on all the inner walls is the tab goes to the top because that tab will go into a roof section of the tower. Now, as I said, for painting mine, I wanted it to have a little bit of a worn look, not like a brand new out of the box type look. 
So I did do some dry brushing while I was putting the paint on, but I didn't do it to the extent where it looks like the paint is peeling or anything. I did try a couple of stains on the bottom to see how it looked afterwards. Uh, and you can see here, it doesn't have the effect of peeling paint, but it does look like it's a little uh, weather worn and probably they'll need to repaint this building in a few years. So once I got that look that I liked, I put the dry brushing on all four panels. And then I came back and I went over it with this underlying grease. And I like it because it tones down the look and it kind of blends it together. So you don't have any large variations and it makes the whole thing look like it's in fairly good shape, but the kind of variations that you're gonna get in an actual building. And once I was done with that, I went ahead and cut out all of the different pieces for the outer wall. Now, once I cut them out, you have the little tabs where you cut them and you're cutting with the grain, so it's really easy to do. But I used a sanding stick and just sanded down all the nubs so that it was nice and smooth across that edge. And then whenever I'm working with clapboard, I'll always go on the backside and put a mark so I know which is the top. Uh, it's very easy sometimes to put clapboard together upside down and you may not notice until it's too late. And then, you'll never stop noticing it. So I always mark something, especially if it's a piece where it isn't obvious, say it has a door, or in this case, the V that I know goes into the roof. So once I had all my pieces painted and stained, I went ahead and started to assemble them with the inner walls. Now, because I didn't put very much stain on, I didn't have any warping of this wood. Uh, sometimes if you put a lot of stain or a lot of paint on something, you might have to brace it because it's going to start warping. This didn't, uh, just because I didn't have a lot on. But once you glue it on to the inner wall, you're not going to have any kind of problems like that. The only thing that I noticed when I was test fitting was a couple of my tabs were just a touch big. And this may be just in my kit where this happened. Humidity. So, so I just used my Ultimation sander and took a little bit off of the tab, and then it fit perfectly. And that's what you want is this nice flush fit so the tab can fit into the slot there. So I put an X of glue onto each inner wall and glued it with my outer wall. And then to make sure everything was lined up, I put it between two of my blocks, and that way the inner wall and the outer wall were perfectly aligned to each other. And again, make sure your tab is to the top and that your clapboard is facing the right way. Now, once I did all four walls, I taped them together. And there was one thing that I wanted to check because the kit was still new to me. I've done a number of towers and clear stories on the top of buildings, and there's two ways of doing it. You can either have a big notch for the entire tower, and it sits on top of a regular roof, or as Jeff did, he has a hole cut in the roof and this fits into it. And what I wanted to make sure is sometimes when it's sitting on top of the roof, you have to sand these edges so that they fit flush. But in this case, I did a test fit and it fits perfectly without any sanding. I have a, a 90 degree block sitting under this, so I just, uh, put the two roof pieces together, they're not assembled yet. And you can see here how the inner wall slides right down into the hole and the outer wall, that V sits right over it. And this side wall, you don't need to do any type of beveling to it because it sits right inside the hole there. And it's just, it's very good engineering. Thank you. <laughs> you make me nervous watching me do this. <laughs> Now, this is the roof to the tower. I went and painted the underside of it the same color that all the clapboard is painting. And I painted the inside of my tower a black. I wasn't sure how easy it would be to see in that window. And I didn't want people just seeing what looked like plywood on the inside there. Uh, if you were gonna light it up, you'd definitely wanna do something on the inside of the tower. 
At this point, I went ahead and used tacky glue and just using the tabs and slots, glued the four walls together and at the same time, put all of the tabs into the roof of the tower. And I used my clamps to hold it together while I was drying. Now, while that was drying, I got out the strip wood that came for the corner posts on the tower. And I went ahead and put those in place. Uh, and I angled the bottom of, the, of them. And you can see how they get angled because they're on the outside and they need the same angle as this V that sits on the roof. And then just glued them in the four corners. And we have our tower done. So next week two, we'll be assembling and painting the walls, painting and assembling the doors, and then painting the corner trim for the main building. And so that's it. Are there any questions about it? I would like to say the, um, the charred marks that you saw on the tower, I have cleaned my laser since, so you won't get the <laughs> charred marks on the outside. Well, how will we know where you cut it then? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, thanks again for doing this with us. And Greg, great build. I'm looking forward to next week. All right. Thank you, Jim.